There's a really silly murder mystery whodunit comedy from the 80s that I've always loved. 1985's Clue, based on the board game Cluedo, obviously. Directed by Jonathan Lynn, written by John Landis and starring Tim Curry, Madeleine Kahn, Eileen Brennan, Christopher Lloyd, Leslie Ann Warren, Michael McKean and Martin Mull. Set in New England in 1954, it tells the story of six strangers who are invited to a mysterious and secluded spooky mansion by an enigmatic butler by the name of Wadsworth. Each guest is given a pseudonym and told not to disclose their real name. This, of course, is a clever way of incorporating the board game's character names. Over the course of the evening, several murders take place and everyone is a suspect and no one can be trusted. Least of all Wadsworth, who seems to know more about what's going on than he's letting on. And he also seems to know why the six guests were even invited to the mansion. Although there's certainly a few decent gags here and there, it's not exactly a laugh a minute comedy either, and some of the jokes do fall a little flat at times. Only Curry's Wadsworth has any real character depth, as the rest of the characters are seriously underdeveloped, though each one remains memorable in their own quirky and eccentric ways, thanks to the performances of the cast, who seem to have really thrown themselves into their roles, despite the limited material the script gave them to work with. I like the film for the complexity, mystery and moments of genuine tension and intrigue, as well as some of the fun in the rapid-fire dialogue, not to mention the enormity of plot twists. Adding to the tension and suspense is the fact that the film largely takes place in one single location and the plot is kept buoyant and energised by Curry's breathless delivery of exposition. He absolutely steals the show and I couldn't imagine anyone else in the role of Wadsworth. However, what the film is perhaps best known for is the fact that it has three different endings. Yep, a film with three different endings. How does that work? Clue is a unique and underrated film, and we're going to talk more about it right after this. Before we go very much further, it's time now for a word from our partner for this video, NordVPN, a virtual private network that will keep you secure and safe online. Your activity and personal information on the internet these days is becoming increasingly more visible to others, and for that reason, you need to take steps to protect your data and privacy. NordVPN provides you with next-generation security features that allows you to do just that. It provides advanced protection against cyber attacks, malware and trackers, and lets you block intrusive ads so that you are in full control of your web browsing experience. In addition to that, you can protect all of your devices on a single subscription. Nord works on Mac, PC, Linux, iOS, Android, and even your Wi-Fi router. Some VPNs really slow down your connection, but not Nord. Whatever you're doing, whether it's watching videos, streaming music, doing video calls, or playing video games, Nord's 5,200 plus super fast servers and groundbreaking Nord Lynx protocol mean that there's no bandwidth limits to worry about, just a robust, secure, and really fast connection. And their no logs policy means that there's no record of your web browsing history for third parties to see. You can hide your IP address with just a few clicks and have peace of mind while online and in addition, Nord offers dedicated technical and customer support with a knowledgeable and friendly staff. Right now, Nord is celebrating its 10th birthday and from February 9th for one month, they're offering 70% off to those of you who buy a two-year subscription. And those of you who purchase a subscription during this time will receive a bonus gift from Nord also. Use my link in the description box and download Nord today. And if you make use of the promo code Computing Forever, you'll get one month for free when buying the two-year plan. So welcome back. Plot spoilers ahead. So after the guests sit down for dinner and wait for the arrival of their host, after some awkward and uncomfortable silence, they begin to make small talk in the hopes of figuring out what they all have in common that could be the reason why they were invited to the house in the first place. They figure out that they are all connected in some way to Washington, D.C. Professor Plum is the only one who doesn't live there, but like most of them, he has a government job. Mrs. Peacock's husband is a U.S. senator. So there's the first clue, some kind of government connection between all of them. The host finally arrives. Mr. Body. Wadsworth informs them of the primary thing that links all of them together. They're all being blackmailed, and they don't know who their blackmailer is. They have each been paying a considerable amount of money to this person so that their secrets will not be exposed. Mr. Plum had an affair with a patient. Mrs. Peacock was taking bribes for delivering her husband's vote to certain lobbyists. 
Miss Scarlet runs a brothel. Colonel Mustard is a war profiteer who is also one of her clients. Mrs. White's two deceased husbands died mysteriously and she is suspected of killing them both. And finally, Mr. Green is a homosexual. And if that information got out, he would lose his job on security grounds. Wadsworth then reveals that it's Mr. Body who's been blackmailing them. He gives each of them a box to open. Inside is an item that could be used as a murder weapon. He tells them that if they denounce him to the police, who are apparently on the way, that they will each be exposed and humiliated. But if one of them kills Wadsworth immediately, no one but the seven of them will ever know. He switches out the light, a gunshot is heard going off in the darkness, and when the light is switched back on, Mr. Body is found presumably dead on the floor. Yvette joins them after they hear her screaming in panic about the whole situation, and Wadsworth explains that he is not the butler, but he was Mr. Body's butler. Wadsworth had invited them to Mr. Body's house by writing the letters they received. Body had also been blackmailing Wadsworth, whose late wife had friends who were socialists. Wadsworth's plan was to stop Mr. Body's campaign of blackmail by inviting all of them together in the house to confront him about his crimes before turning him over to the police. The cook is an initial suspect, but she's found dead in the kitchen stabbed to death. When they return with her body to the study, they find that Mr. Body's body is gone. Turns out he wasn't dead after all. He's found dead later for real in the bathroom, however. They decide to split up and search the house to find the killer. While this is happening, they have two additional uninvited guests. A motorist looking to use their phone and a police officer. But there's more behind their arrival than meets the eye. There's a few macabre and spooky moments that I quite like, such as the slightly cliched scene where an unidentified person wearing gloves burns the blackmail evidence in a fire, opens the weapons locker and kills the motorist. There's also an unknown voice who speaks to Yvette before strangling her. Very spooky. Also, it turns out Yvette isn't French after all. What I like about so many of the situations and characters is that nothing is really what it appears to be. Colonel Mustard and Miss Scarlet discover a hidden passage in the house, which might help to explain how the killer was able to move around so easily without being seen. When the cop arrives, he also wishes to use their phone only to receive a call from J. Edgar Hoover. The cop is eventually killed by the mysterious unknown figure during the search of the house and a singing telegram who turns out to be Professor Plum's patient, is shot at the door. The bodies continue to stack up, but who is doing all of this and why remains a mystery. It's at this point that Wadsworth tells them that he knows who did it and why and how. From here on out, I won't say any more about the plot, as I don't want to spoil the three different endings. Each one provides a satisfying and plausible explanation for the entire whodunit mystery. At the time of the film's release, some theatres received different endings. This was seen as a kind of a gimmick by some critics, but thankfully, the final version for television and DVD provides all three endings together in succession. Now, there is one thing that I will spoil, which is the fact that there was actually, believe it or not, a fourth ending filmed, but it was cut from the film because it was considered by the filmmakers to be too dark, in contrast with the rest of the film's light-hearted tone. In this final version, Wadsworth tells them that he did all of the murders and was motivated by his desire for perfection. He tried to be the perfect husband, but his wife killed herself. He tried to be the perfect butler, but he killed his employer. So instead, he tried to be the perfect murderer. Professor Plum points out that he isn't the perfect murderer because he has left six witnesses who have heard his confession. But Wadsworth replies that there will soon be 12 dead bodies because they all drank poisoned champagne and without the antidote, they will be dead in three hours. With the phone lines ripped out, they have no way of calling for help. The doorbell rings. It's the old salesman. He's an FBI agent. He apprehends Wadsworth and physically restrains him. This appears to be the only available image from that ending. The police frisk the guests. Wadsworth tells the police he will explain how he did all the murders, but then he escapes, locking them in the house. He runs down the driveway and steals a police car. He drives off, but he hears a growl as two police dogs lunge at him from the back seat of the car. The guests watch from the windows of the house as he crashes the vehicle. The end. For whatever reason, this ending has never seen the light of day, but maybe one day it'll be released. For now, three endings will have to be enough.
Like so many cult classics, Clue was unsuccessful at the box office, but over the years, it's become very iconic, with so many memorable one-liners. I'm shouting! I'm shouting! I'm shouting! Just checking. Everything all right? Yep, two corpses, everything's fine. Let us in! Let us in! Let, let us out! Let, let us out! Don't you think we should get that man out of the house before he finds out what's been going on here? Is that what we ate? <laughs> Flame, flames, flames on the side of my face. Breathing, breath, heaving breaths. Like the Mantis, we always get our man. Mrs. Peacock was a man? <coughs> and to make a long story short, too late! If you enjoy this kind of film, there's another movie from 1976 which Clue often gets compared to, Murder by Death, and I also recommend that movie. Finally, if you've never seen Clue, you really should. It's just an all-round, easy, comfort-watch film. It's a good time.